Are you one of those people who push yourself to the limit, getting up early, busy, 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 going to and fro all day, staying up late, being available all the time, failing to get enough rest? Well, this episode is for you. Welcome to the Empowerment Zone with Ramona Houston where we zone in on black and brown relations and our journey to empowering our communities. Today, I'm talking to Salima abdul Bafur. She is a woman on the move. Salima has figured out in her own life's journey that she does not need to earn her rest. Salima is the director of the Office of the Chief Communications Officer and Chief of Staff of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And today we're talking all about the significance of rest. Enjoy our conversation and see the show notes for more information about Salima. As always, make sure you subscribe to the Empowerment Zone podcast and give us a rating on Apple Podcast. Your support will make sure that we continue our journey in empowerment and impact. Hi, Ramona, thank you so much. And and greetings to all of your listeners around the world. You know, bonjour, salam alaikum, (laughs) karibu. I don't know many languages, but um, greetings to everyone listening all over the world. Buenos dias. Uh, Buenos dias. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm so. so yes, uh, I, it is a pleasure to have you here as well, and I'm I'm so glad uh, that we're going to have this valuable conversation about rest. Uh, you are a busy woman, and I'm sure that you came into this realization about rest. Uh, because of your uh, professional career and and some of the things that the work you do and the nonstop work you you do. So tell us, tell tell me a little bit about yourself, your background, your work uh, and how you came to the point of realizing the importance of rest. You know, I, I'd say the the pan, one of the blessings of the pandemic and the slowdown from the pandemic was really had me understand that I needed rest. I, like so many people, have worked a job for probably two decades, have had several roles that were high profile, very demanding, and required almost 24-7 being on, and um, required a degree of, you know, what I regularly did. 10 hour days um, and where I regularly worked on the weekends, worked through holidays. And um, even though I have family responsibilities, I don't have children in the household and I don't have a partner living with me. So I think sometimes living alone also fed that like, okay, I can do this, I can do this. And, you know, I just looked at the the cumulative impact on my mental, emotional, and spiritual health. And having those days where I was constantly exhausted. I mean, there was one time where I came into work and I I literally thought I had had a stroke. I, I literally thought I had had a stroke. I was coughing, I was wheezing. And I remember like the witness part of me saying, why are you still going to work? Like go home and rest, you know? And I just like, no, I can push through, I can push through. And even though I genuinely thought that there was a possibility that I might have had a stroke. I was actually walking, you know how you walk straight ahead? I was walking sideways and I was like snotting. It was disgusting, you know, coughing, sneezing. And my team was like, go home. And I was like, no, no, I'm gonna push through. I can do this meeting. I can sign this paperwork. I can do this. And they were like, no, go home. And I went home and I like collapsed to the point where like my family came in to see me because they were concerned just to how I sounded on the phone. And I remember when they arrived, my, my cousin was like, you've lost weight in just the last 48 hours and you look terrible. And it took like a week and there was nothing like, there. I didn't end up going to the doctor. I just needed rest. I needed to be away from work. I needed to um, not be emailing, meeting, producing 
Um, and I and I remember lying there being thinking, why don't I feel the right to rest? Why don't I feel like I have um, earned or that I can rest without being guilty? So I remember just lying there thinking, why don't I feel? And that sort of opened the world to me of being like, you know, there's this whole and I, and I, and there's powerful social and cultural dynamics that feed into it, particularly for Black women. Like work yourself to death. Don't get recognition. You have to earn your rest. Like you can't rest Mm. unless you've worked a certain amount of time, unless you've produced a certain amount of things, unless you've done a certain amount. You can't, you don't just um, have the right to put everything down and rest. And I really have found in my life that that is a uniquely black American woman thing where we, we literally work ourselves to death. We have strokes, we have heart attacks, we take on everybody's problems. Um, we feel like we, we're, the, we're the ones that have to save everybody. We got to take care of these children. We got to take care of the parents, the elders, the aunts, the neighbors. But we neglect taking care of ourselves. And, the, and, the, and it shows up in our health and all of the statistics. You know, Black women tend to be among, among the lowest in terms of quality of life statistics, diabetes, hypertension, obesity, exercise, stress, fibroids, strokes, heart disease, cancer, all of these things. And so it really opened me up and I'm nowhere, I'm, I'm definitely on the inquiry. I'm not proselytizing. I'm not telling people how they should be. I'm just, I'm talking about my particular journey. And so it opened me up to this inquiry of being like, why do I feel like I don't have the right to rest and to relax and to take things down and to take time off? Why do I feel like I have to be accessible during vacation? And so I, at the same time, I started deepening my yoga practice and I I was introduced to a woman named Octavia Rahim, who is a a well-known black yogi um, practitioner and teacher here based in Atlanta, but she teaches all over. And she has, over the past couple of years, began to see this conversation around rest. And, you know, one of the most profound things that she said to me and that she posted was, you don't have to earn your rest. Mm. And it still sometimes sounds a little bit like, you know, a foreign language, because my training has been that you have to earn your rest. You, you have to work hard and push through difficult things and sacrifice and suffer before you can rest. And that has had an impact on me. And so I have promised myself that this next phase of life will be resting without a reason, (laughs) resting (laughs) without um, judgment, Mm. resting without explanation. Mm. Um, And and I'm still deeply uncomfortable about it, right? Like I still have moments where I'm like, oh, I should be doing, I should be doing. And and even if it's not work, I'm like, oh, I should wash those dishes. I should do that laundry. I should cook these this, these meals for my mother. I should do this. I should do that. And, it, and, I, and I, I'm not there yet. Like I'm not at a place where I feel like, yes, boom, I'm resting. I'm taking off. Right. I, I just, I'm kind of like moving along and every now and then it'll be like, that's a lie. You, you, you have not earned your rest. Girl, you need to do some more. I know you're tired. You need to do some more. You need to answer some more of these emails. And I've just now gotten to the point where I can be like, that's a lie. That is the devil. No, no, I'm not here to kill myself. My value is not in if I answer these five additional emails. Um, no, I don't have to get up right now and do, do more. I can just be. Not just... Um, I'm still like, I'm looking for people out in the world to help me with that because uh, that's why I talk about it because it is, it is different and runs par- counter to everything that I've been told and taught. And yet Octavia talks about rest and, you know, now there's like this, this slow, slowly growing movement around it where doctors actually prescribe rest to their patients and say, you know, there's nothing wrong with you. You just need to rest like in in, in an intentional 
and, and um, regular way. And some people call it meditation. It could be, but you know, where you turn off devices, where you're not working for your job, where you're not working for your spouse, your household, et cetera, and you're just at rest. And the thing that's so brilliant about that is that really in our rest state is where we can be our most creative, mm-hmm. where we can be our most productive, where the solutions to the problems um, come. And I know that when I do rest, I do feel better about my overall life and I do find peace and um, problem solving. But there's, but there's still like, I'm still not like totally um, empowered in it and totally like, yes, this is what it is. And so I find rest to be about resistance, about empowerment, about love, about freedom, about self-care, um, and defining rest in different ways. Rest can be actually laying down, for me, rest can be actually laying down in my bed and being in that position, but it can also be sitting on my porch and looking at the trees. It can be going outside. Sometimes during the day, I, I have back-to-back calls. Oftentimes I go outside and just let the sun hit my face and just don't, I don't bring my phone and I just let the sun hit my face and stand there in, in the glory of the sun and the, the outdoors until it's time for me to come back in whenever spirit says, come back in, or my body says, go back in. And so I want to build a practice around that where I'm able to rest more and I'm able to do it without negative judgment on myself. And, and I think that many Octavia does a lot. So Octavia's mentor is a woman named Gail Parker, a black woman who's senior citizen and she's a yogi. And she also talks about rest and just how much is accessible. And, you know, this runs counter to everything that we know, but um, both of them have brilliant lives. And I'm like, I want to be like them. (laughs) (laughs) I want to be like them. And so I am on my path and just keen to meet and talk to other people about how this resonates with them, what it feels like to them, um, how they rest and how, what they think about rest. And, you know, I'm even open to the people who are like, girl, you crazy. You got to work. Keep working. working." You know, I've never really thought about it, but you're so true. I mean, you're so right. And it is so true about this whole concept that you have to earn your rest. You know, you got to work however many 50, uh, uh, how many weeks is it? 52 weeks in a year, you've got to work 50 weeks and then you get two, two weeks off, you know, like, and you were talking about the whole, yes. Yes. And the whole thing about black women, you know, not resting, you know, I do feel I'm one of those people who feel guilty about stopping until it's time to go to bed. And I, and my husband is always like, well, Mona, get some rest, just chill out. And I don't know how to chill. Even if I'm sitting down, I'm like, what you just said, let me go do this dish dishes. Let me go do this. Let me go do that. Go, go, go. When you really, we're not machines. We're supposed to rest. Even God rested, you know? (laughs) So we should take that moment uh, to get some rest and we shouldn't have any justification for that rest. I love uh, those two concepts. I really discovered um, the importance of rest uh, after my brother died, uh, Mm -hmm. which was uh, my little brother and only brother. And it was so stressful and uh, for our family. And there were times when, um, and, and like you said, you have to know what your body wants and, and know what your spirit needs. There were times when I would go to work and I would just just start crying. I was just stressed out and I couldn't figure it out. And then my sister and I, because we always were consulting each other, working through the process. You know, we were each other's psychologists and all of that. And we discovered that for me, when I didn't get enough rest, it would trigger you know, Mm. trigger that. Mm. And so that's when I started being very, very conscious about making sure I got my several hours of rest, whatever 
I needed. As I've gotten older, I've realized I need more rest now. Mm -hmm. And so Mm -hmm. I can't get up at five in the morning like I used to. Now it's six or seven, you know, so we we really have to listen to our bodies and see, listen to see what is good for us. But most importantly, using your power to take the rest. We don't use our power. You know, and uh, we've got to figure out what helps us to rest in different ways. I, you know, I sit out on the deck in the back like you. I like to sit in the sun. And I, I like you, I sit there until I'm ready. And I do that several times a day. That's my mm-hmm. break. Um, s- sit in the sun and just chill out, you know. But the doing part is the part I still haven't gotten away from. You know, resting for me is reading a good book. But hey, I don't read that good book because I got to go do this. You know, I got to answer this email or do that. So I really, really like your uh, those two concepts that you've shared that you learned uh, from others that you don't have to earn your rest, right? And you don't have to have justification for taking a rest. I that's exactly right. And what what I really want to do is is evolve to a place where I feel. what is the word? I, I, there's no guilt or shame or judgment around mm-hmm. me resting and where mm-hmm. I actually through rest and play and joy and pleasure create and problem solve. And there's so little in the world to support that, right? Mm-hmm. Like, like it's counterculture, right? Cause it's like, oh no. I mean, that's the other thing I think people need to look at is this concept of hard work. I don't know anybody who doesn't work hard. We all work hard. Mm-hmm. How can you say that your work, you work harder than the person who works 12 hour shifts cleaning offices. Mm -hmm, They work mm -hmm, hard. mm -hmm, You can't mm -hmm. say they don't work hard. You can't say that you're any better or worse. Mm -hmm. So like this whole concept of hard work will get you X. I'm, I'm also pulling that apart because yes, you have to put in effort. Yes, you have to put in your acts. But the, the idea that you're and it also fits into this worthiness question where you're not worthy until you've done something, until you've produced something, until you've hard worked your way into something. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's very godly or godlike. And I don't <laughs> think, I think we're already worthy. And I think Black women, you know, we have enough historically and in the present moment that holds us back. And one of the things that we have to, pull down, tear down is this idea that we're not worthy until we, you know, produce something or, or create something like we're worthy because we are innocent children of God. I believe in God. I'm a believing woman. We're worthy because we're here and we don't have to prove our worth to anybody. I don't have to prove my worth to anybody. And that's a very different place to look because one would argue, I would argue that part of my professional success has been because I worked myself into into a a divvy and, and, you know, worked myself until I was crazy and stayed up late and into the night and did a whole lot more. But I still think I'm confident that I can be even more successful in my career and, um, be even more helpful to my teams and my employees, past, present, present, and future. Um, it, the, the, the better I come to my work, the better the work will be. So I'm not there. I'm on my journey. I'm not, I'm, I'm talking about my particular journey. I'm not proselytizing. Yeah. Everybody has their own journey, but the importance is that you discover the importance of rest, Right. Uh, For me, uh, I've also discovered the importance of exercise. I don't, I I don't, I don't do anything. My day doesn't, it doesn't, my first, I got my own ritual. In the morning, I do my morning prayers. I go exercise. I come back, do my affirmations and, and, and eat my breakfast. And then I go to work. You know, Mm -hmm. and if you call me, if you text me during that period of time, you're not, 
you're not going to get me. I don't care. That's going to go first. But I realize, like you said, you're not proselytizing, but you realize the importance of rest for you now in your evolution, right? Now I'm going to add rest as more important, just like as it as important as the exercise component in the in the morning prayers and the morning ritual. That rest has to be incorporated into your lifestyle. Yeah. You know, we cannot continue to push ourselves indefinitely, indefinitely until we make ourselves sick. And right. you, named, you named all right. the challenges we have, Black women, uh, <laughs> what we suffer from. <clears throat> and, you know, in terms of fibroids, maybe that's one of the one of the reasons for fibroids, even though that hadn't been studied the way I it should be stress, studied. The, the stress, you can't ignore the, the, the stress factor, the stress that we're under. And just the whole idea that, you know, when you try to slow down, um, people are like, no, you got to keep, you got to keep moving. You got to keep earning. You got to keep producing. And for me, like, I love that you talked about your morning ritual. Like I meditate in the morning. I pray and I meditate in the morning. And it's like, whatever time I get up, if it's five o'clock or eight o'clock or nine o'clock, I have to, like, I'm not one of these people anymore that I'm like, oh, I can be there. I can get up and then be where I need to be in an hour. Cause that's like shower, dress, go. No, I have to build an additional hour mm -hmm. of time so that I can do those things. Because if I don't, my whole day is like this. Mm -hmm. I can feel it now mm -hmm. um, if I don't. And I have to be like at 12 o'clock, I'll be like, hold up. Let me just sit down now. Cause there's no point in going through this day like this. Mm -hmm. um, but I, but I know that people rest in different ways. And what I do find is that people are resting in their own way. They don't call it rest. They call it prayer or meditation, or they call it working out, or they call it walking, or they call it socializing with their friends. So I do think people have ways, but um, I want to be more loving with myself in mm -hmm. all ways. And rest is a key component of that. And there's many ways to rest. And I also look forward to discovering different ways to rest, right? Like I want to get out in nature more. Um, I want to travel more. I want to um, take on new hobbies and things that bring me energy and enthusiasm. And yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm on my path. I'm on my way. And, you know, send me some good energy and I'll, I'll continue <laughs> to be on my path. But I, I do feel like we have to save ourselves. Mm -hmm. Like if we, if we wait for this society to, to save us, it, you know, we'll be another black woman in <laughs> underground, you know, uh, I'll be another black woman underground. I have to save myself. So um, in saving myself, it's part of like, I've, I've been exploring this idea of black freedom and black love and like love for self and self care. You know, God has endowed me with this physical vessel and this soul. I must take care of it. I must nurture it. I must mm -hmm. treat it as, as uh, something that came from God and not be like, well, I can just, you know, work myself to death. I don't have to eat. I don't have to drink water. I don't have to rest. I don't have to do those things. Just like I, I have other responsibilities. Part of my responsibility is to take care of myself. Mm hmm Mm -hmm. so. That is a responsibility is to take care of yourself. So I'm a newbie with rest. So what advice would you give me in terms of some tidbits to help me incorporate rest into my life and lifestyle uh, more? So what I did was I, I started, um, I looked at, as I said, Octavia Rahim has two books out on rest. And she also, I mean, if, if reading is, is too much, just check her out on IG. She's got clips that will, I mean, like I, for me, I find that even the clips like earn your rest. I, that just kind of like, boom, <laughs> do not have to earn your rest. But like, I still like that blows my mind. Right. Mm -hmm. And then I just sit in and I was like, what would rest look like today? Would it look like, you know, making sure that I go to bed on time, which means I have to plan in the morning. Like in order for me to go to bed on time, like right now I have to be, where's my day, right? I got to think about meals and people and all that. Wait, I got to I gotta, I gotta interrupt you right there. My family laughs at me because I'm this, my husband stays up really late and I'm not, I, 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 I just don't. But my family laughs at me because I have a bedtime alarm that's that 
tells me when it starts, it's time to start getting ready for bed. And when the alarm goes off, I have two. One that says you got 30 minutes left for this day. And the next one is it's time to get ready to go to bed. And they always crack up about that. But I know I have to be in the bed by 9 15 9 30 to be up and ready for the next day you know right. and so uh bedtime that's, alarm. A, that's a beautiful thing right like so <laughs> you have figured out what it will take for you to get the rest so that you can be your best self a plus for you <laughs> like you should ha- like it should not even be a thing like all of us need to figure that out there is a sleep deprivation mm-hmm. problem in this country that has you know the data show it has led to illness and chaos and all sorts of havoc right on. Like I want to be in that inquiry. So for me, rest is making sure that I get up multiple times during the day. It's also saying to my assistant, do not book me back to back for all these meetings, put in not only bathroom breaks, but put in breaks where I can just go outside and put the sun on my, let the sun rest on my face. Make sure that I can eat without having to work through eating because that's the other thing is like eating with awareness helps my digestion and my Mm -hmm. overall health. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I just am in that inquiry. Sometimes rest is laying down, but sometimes rest for me is turning off the television, turning off my phone, having a half hour of no, uh, no devices. There's lots of way that you can achieve rest. Sometimes it's gardening or it is cooking a meal, or it's having a cup of tea with a partner or by yourself. There's so, I I think there are lots of ways that I achieve rest and that I've observed other people achieving rest. And really what it is is for me to continue to be in my inquiry on what rest means. But for me, the, 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 the biggest switch has been not feeling, um, what is the word? judgment against myself, giving myself permission, because it always is like, oh, you don't, you you know, that you shouldn't be doing that. This is not, you should be working. You know, this is too indulgent. I get a massage more regularly now. That to me is rest and has made my body feel great. I prioritize um, my trainer now because during the pandemic, I let it go. Um, All those things have helped me to be a better boss, a better employee, a better daughter, a better auntie, a better Salima. So all, all of those things I've done and will continue to do. And I, I'm actually looking for people to continue to spark ideas for me on um, how, how they're resting and how they're moving. And, and I particularly want this for Black women because, you know, as a whole, we're up against so many things. So, so many things. And um, our way to a better quality of life for black women as a group is transforming these societal notions around our worth and our contribution. So Salima, we are now in our college success strategies portion of our interview and want to know what college or colleges did you attend? What were your major or majors and degrees? And then what strategy would you provide students to ensure that they're successful in college? I went to Columbia University for undergraduate and graduated with a BA in history. I did a lot of coursework on urban planning and I sat for the LSAT after college and I took some graduate courses at the new school, I just didn't want to, I didn't want to go into more debt, to be honest. And um, uh, that's what, why I really stopped going to school. I, I think with everything, my advice to college students is that it should make sense for you. College is a great opportunity to explore yourself, to explore the world, but let it make sense for you. I do think that my generation was sold a bill of goods around, you know, like the college debt crisis is borne by um, African-American people of color um, who are middle, uh, middle managers now, 
Um, very few have the sort of professional success where they can boom, pay off all their student loans. And so now what you see are a lot of um, people of color who have six figures in debt and um, won't be able to earn the money to pay that off um, in, in any sort of you know five or six year plan, but it will take 20 or 30 years. And college means different things to different people. So I, feel, I, I don't have any regrets about college and I encourage people to go, and, but I encourage you to go eyes wide open and to make it make sense for you, right? Like go and, and have the experiences that you think you wanna have, explore the things that, you, that, that you're attracted to and see it as a milestone in the life that you're creating and building for yourself. As much as you can try to stay out of what other people are foisting and saying it's going to be for you or what it should be for you um, and focus on what is the experience that I want to have now and then when I leave and let that guide you. That is very good advice. Let college make sense for you, meaning you have to decide what type of experiences you want to have in college and how your college experience will empower you to have the experiences you want after college. That's right. Th thank you so much, Salima, for that advice. We appreciate it.